Hello, welcome to today's session. Today we will be covering two major topics in agricultural geography, that is crop combination and crop diversification. So let's understand what is crop combination and then we'll start with what is crop diversification. So here is a very simple exercise to understand what is crop combination. Now, when I talk about the term crop combination, by crop combination I mean that in a given specific region, I am trying to grow more than one crop. Okay, so more than one crop. When I will do that, the major reason attributed to this is I need uh, kind of multiple crops to sustain my family. Okay, then I try to give a strength to an individual crop because some of the crops are dependent on other crops. So if they have other crops adjacent to them, they do well. Then there is an area significance. For example, this area is rich in uh, black soil. So all the uh, kinds of crops which work well in black, black soil can be grown into that region. So for that, you try to understand the concept of crop combination. Now, here are two fields. So this is field one, two, three, and four. So this whole field is dominated by a single crop, say for example, wheat, okay? So that means 100% of this region is occupied by wheat. Then here I say there are two crops, say wheat and barley. So I say the proportion of each is 50-50. Then I say here there are three crops, wheat, barley and say oats. So here the proportion is 33.3, 33.3 and 33.3. And here I say there are four crops, say wheat, barley, oat and maize. So here the proportion of each crop in optimum condition that would grow is 25 of each. Now this is something we call about an ideal demarcation. For example, if I have a plot of land, say 50 acres, I want to grow two crops, wheat and barley. I can say, okay, I'll allocate 25 acres for wheat and 25 acres for barley. But that is not the real way in which crop combination works. Based on that, there were various geographers who gave different concepts on crop combination. So we will be talking about three major geographers today. So first is Weaver, Doyle, and Rafiola. So we'll start with Weaver's concept. Weaver in 1954 gave the concept of crop combination where he talked about understanding the crops by means of a statistical formula. So he said his main concentration was Midwest region. Okay. And he calculated deviation of the real percentage of possible combinations. So we talked about four possible combinations. So he talked about deviations from that real percentage. So for example, this is the percentage of production on a piece of land, okay? Now, how many crops should I grow on that piece of land to give me an optimum combination? How will I calculate it? So Weaver, uh, Weaver gave the formula theta is equal to under root of summation of deviation square by number of crops. So this is very simple. So he said, for monoculture, what would be the resultant? It would be 100 minus 35 whole square divided by 1 because there is just one crop wheat. If I talk about two crops, wheat and barley, what would be the deviation? It would be 50 because two crops, it's 50-50. So 50 minus 35 square plus 50 minus 24 square divided by 2. Okay. If there are three crops, it would be 33.3 minus 35 square plus 33.3 minus 24 whole square plus 33.3 minus 15 whole square. That's the next block divided by 3. Okay. So by this means, I'll calculate combination for one crop, two crop, three crop, four crop, five crop, six crop, and seven crop. See, for with this example, I keep on solving the values and I get for one crop, the value is 4 to 2, 5. For two crops, it's 450.4. For three crops, it's 
For four crops, it's 106.95. For five crops, it's 99. For six crops, it's 138.2. And finally, for seven crops, it's 113.2. So I can say that the lowest value here is for five crops. That means I should grow these five crops. That is wheat, barley, pea, rice, and gram on that patch of land that would give me the best crop combinations and best resulting. So according to Weaver, this is the method of calculating the best practice for crop combination. And based on that, he said that we will be, uh, the best method here is to grow five crops. Now what Dewey did, Dewey used the same formula as Weaver, but he did not divide it by the number of crops. So he's dividing by the number of crops. So in this case, number of crops is one. So he's dividing by one. In this case, it's two. And in this case, it's three. What Dewey did was simple. 100 minus 35 is square. Then 50 minus 35 is square plus 50 minus 24 is square. Okay. And so on for one crop, two crop, three crop, four crop, five crop, six crop, and seven crop. So the values he got for the same was 4 to 2, 4 to 2, 5. Then you have 901, then you have 424, 426, then you have 495, 833, and so on. So here you can see the lowest value is for three crop. So according to Doi, in the same region of land, it's best to grow three crops. And those three crops are here, wheat, barley, and peas. So according to him, wheat, barley and peas would be the best combination for that region. So he basically substituted the variance of weaver with the sum of a square deviation. Okay, So <clears throat> this was the Doe's formula and finally Raffiola. Raffiola's concept is known as the concept of new maximum positive method. So under this method what Raffiola did was Raffiola tried to found the crop combination as a difference of positive deviation minus difference of negative deviation divided by the total value. And in the same way, he tried to calculate the value. So his DP was deviation from the positive mean value and DN was the deviation from the negative of the medial value. And then he tried to calculate the values and find out the answer. This was the crop combination method given by Weber, Doi, and Rafiola. Now we have understood what is crop combination, what are the various ways of calculating crop combination, and why is it important. The next thing we'll move on to is the concept of diversification. Now, a very simple example here to understand the concept of diversification is, look at this figure. Assume on the patch of land, the only animals that existed on earth were elephants and only crops that existed were wheat. What would be the scenario of the world? Okay, there was only wheat and only elephants as the animals. Would it be a real scenario that you can imagine? There was no shrubs, no trees, no bushes, nothing, just wheat and wheat and wheat. Okay. For, similarly, if you are having your meal daily and in the meal you are a, eating only chapatis and only chapatis, what would happen? There would be a level of saturation that would reach. So what is important here is diversification. So to rule out that monotonous setup, what we need is diversification. So now let's understand the concept of diversification and the importance of diversification. So we'll start with the concept of diversification in agriculture. So in agriculture, how we can diversify? There are various ways of diversifying agriculture. I can grow flowers. I can do livestock along with agriculture. I can do kind of mixed farming, farming plus poultry or, agri uh, or livestock rearing. Then there is sericulture or silkworm rearing. You can grow forest. You can do urban forestry in the region where there are not uh, enough of trees in an urban area. Then you can grow flowers. So these are various diversifications of agriculture, the core agriculture. Okay. Now, why is diversification important? As we said, 
Diversification provides natural resources sustainability because you are not exhausting just one resource. If I am growing wheat and wheat and wheat, I am not uh, fully utilizing the potential of other agricultural facilities or other resources. Then we need to maintain an ecological balance, the food web and the food pyramids that exist within the system. Then you have a kind of, uh, you need to maintain the employment, the output growth, you need to reduce the risk. For example, there is a pest infection on wheat crop, what would happen? All the wheat crop would vanish away. So you should have a kind of substitute crop that you are growing so that all your farms do not run into losses. So there is risk reduction with diversification if I am a farmer and I am growing wheat and barley. All my wheat crops are damaged due to some pest infection. I can still earn through barley. So I am trying to reduce my risk by diversification. I am promoting export. Okay, Then I can rule out poverty because I am providing employment to a lot of people. It increases my income. Okay, It provides me more security and safety. And then I can use resources with a judicious way and ultimately reduce the level of pollution in the region. Now there are various issues and uh, why they are important in diversification. So productivity and stability. With diversification, I get more yield. I can grow, grow various crops in various seasons for say, for example, I say uh, a specific crop is a rabi crop or a kharif crop. I should have something that I can grow in alternate season. So I have interseasonal variations, which is very high in case of agriculture. I try to minimize my risk and increase my income. So there should be energy efficient implements. So energy efficient implements should be used for higher self-sufficiency and diversification. Then I try to uh, reduce the pest infections and land degradation. So I improve the quality of land and also I provide uh, employment throughout the year. Otherwise, if I'm growing just one crop, for example, a rabi crop, uh, all employment would be seasonal. So I'll employ only people in the month of, uh, in the month when there is rabi crop there. So these are the various advantages of crop diversification. Now, what are the methods we can use for optimum diversification of a crop? So here is, the list of methods so we can move we can diversify into high water requiring crops rather than low water requiring crops that's one of the methods okay so diversification to high water requiring crops then i can diversify cotton with pulses and oil seeds so i can mix crops so here is where this crop combination plays an important role okay i can replace low yielding crops with high yielding variety of seeds I can do intercropping, I can grow lanes of crops of two or three different types or do mixed cropping in dry areas and I can do uh, basically risk crops with drought resistant crops. For example, some crops are not affected by famines or droughts, for example, oil seeds. So I can grow oil seeds everywhere where I feel there is a scarcity of water. So at least if other persons do not grow well, there is lack of water in a particular season, what would happen is my oil seeds will, uh, oil seeds will flourish. So at least I get returns from some of the crops. So these are the various strategies to increase diversification. Now, what are the major issues or problems or constraints I face by diversifying? In India, you do not have very good infrastructure. Then you have post-harvest technological problems. You do not have good agro-based industries and research workers. There is lack of investment in agriculture because everyone who is getting a bit literate in villages trying to move out. So people do not have much R&D, much investment in agriculture. There is no proper database for crop management, which crop works well in which season. There are a lot of diseases which are affecting the crops. Then the human resources are poorly trained. So since the human resources are not trained, they do not direct people which crop to grow in which season and what are the uh, pesticides or fertilizers you should use so as to get an optimum yield, how to use HYV uh, seeds and so on. 
so there is lack of poor uh, lack of trained staff then a lot of small holdings because there is a small holdings you cannot do mechanization on that holdings uh, so you will have to do conventional way of farming that would again affect the uh, fertility and the uh, fertility of the soil so these are the major problems that we face while diversification now what are the future issues or the thrust areas that you should focus on to improve the production of the crop so the first and the foremost here is i must identify the various varieties of crop i can see which varieties work well in my region then i must be prepared for locational specific approach okay this location is good for rabi crop this location is good for uh, since it is a black soil it's good for cotton so i should have a location approach uh, location specific approach where i'm trying to target specific set of uh crops and specific set of population based on that i should be able to develop a cropping system which explains which crops are better and which crops sustain at a higher rate then i must include high value crops in my uh in my details that these are the high value crops and i uh, farmer must include at least one of the high value crops so that he can earn good and he can get better returns from the land and finally there should be uh, high potential cropping systems where we should be able to specify okay these are the crops which explain the high potential of a cropping system okay so with this we cover the concept on crop diversification and crop combination hope the concept of crop diversification and crop combination was very clear in the next session we would be talking about the issues of food security famines and the related problems so stay tuned for the next session have a good day ahead <laughs>